The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show with the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten and head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Frankie DeBusk Show is presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal, located on the 11 Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. Applebee's, eating good in the neighborhood. Sodexo, a worldwide leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. By Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Greenville Federal Bank, Greenville Federal Bank is banking made easy. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, Cleveland, and Greenville. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. The Tuscaloosa Pioneers and the Catawba Indians meet for the 17th time in Salisbury. Hello again, everyone. Brian State with the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. It would be the 17th meeting between Tuscaloosa and Catawba. Ten of the last 12 had been decided by 10 points or less. And of those last 12, seven of those games have been decided by seven points or less. It always seems as if there's some big play at the end of a contest between Tuscaloosa and Catawba, where it Eric McIntyre picking off a pass from Luke Samples at the end zone to preserve a win for the Pioneers, or Octavius Love with a big interception at the end of a contest to preserve yet another win for the Pioneers. And for Catawba, it always appears as if they get a last score. Last year, Jacob Charest with a touchdown at the end to win 23-21. to Well, some of the names have changed, but the series is still the same. We welcome in Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk, whose Pioneers went down to Catawba Fall 14 to 6, lowest scoring game in this series between these two teams, but another close affair, another game where you're in it at the very end, and a game that was halted by weather and just a weird overall game anyway. Very unfortunate, Brian. Our, uh, our offensive football team is just not producing right now, and it's, uh, it's very frustrating. You know, our coaches are working exceptionally hard. Our players are probably working harder. Uh, we feel like we've got some talent. We're just not uh, not converting. I think we had uh, way too many drop passes uh, Saturday night against Catawba uh, for us to, to move the football. And I don't know. It's just uh, it, we're, we're very unsure of ourselves. We're not very consistent. Uh, thought defensively, really, to go to Catawba. Uh, they're always a very physical team to hold them to 14 points at Catawba. And the first drive, we had a little mis misalignment for them to have a big play, but. You eliminate the first drive, and we played a good football game defensively. I uh, feel like we're getting so much better in that phase, making so many strides over there. Uh, kids are starting to understand what we're doing. We started a true freshman at, the, in, at safety for one of our injured guys and ended up holding them to 14. I thought we played well enough defensively to win the ball game. Played good enough on special teams once again to win the ball game. We just uh, continue to shoot ourselves in the foot from an offensive standpoint. And, we just got to keep working and iron out what our problems truly are. It's a pioneer football team averaging 31 points a game. Catawba, though, averaging 33 points per contest held to just 14. Well, we'll take a look at some of those first quarter highlights when the Frankie DeBus Show continues after this, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Nice. Hi, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> 
pony a palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late. <laughs> Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. The Tusculum Pioneers traveled to Salisbury, North Carolina to open up South Atlantic Conference play this past Saturday. Catawba, not a very kind host. They defeat the Pioneers by a final of 14 to 6. We'll take a look at your first quarter highlights presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Enjoy going over to Catawba. You know, they got a good facility over there and very kind people. Uh, there's Chad Story making a big play, a sophomore from Greenville, Tennessee, right here. It's nice to see one of our own making some plays. And we get misaligned right here. Unfortunately, they make a big play and uh, we get it straightened out, but uh, it's, it's 40 or 50 play, um, yards later. It was. Uh, Bobby Morris and a guy who's been basically a, a backup a lot of his career, but he has run down after a 46-yard carry. Luke Harris with the big shot, big hit, and then Kevin Bless will come up. This is going to be one of the new guys on this defensive line for the Pioneers. Good job by Kevin. I think you know he's a red shirt, or actually a, a freshman up in there trying to make some plays, and he's uh, having his own. And there's the, uh, John Perry making a tackle, and Darius Ben, a freshman from Chattanooga, getting his first start in there making some plays, and. Got to make a play there. We've, we've caused a cutback. We've got to be a little more physical inside. The Catawba Indians on this drive to open up the football game. And um, well, when they do punch it in right here, it will still be the fourth consecutive game for the Pioneers. They cannot get a lead. Tusculum has been outscored in the first quarter now on the, se on the year by a score of 34 to 10. Pioneers would finally get a stop. Brian Marshall trying to spark the special teams, which he has done all season long with a great return. Marshall for 27 yards. Just a great job by Brian. Uh, told him he's going to get hurt or, you know, doing the things he's doing, but I like his uh, heart and courage. And here's Chad Blakely getting us a great 15 yard run there to keep it going. Chad's a young uh, sophomore from over at Anderson County also getting his chance to do something out of the backfield. And, you know, I think our offensive line as a whole, Brian, is playing as good as any position on the field. Uh, Dave Davis, Israel Pickens, Jake Bridwell, uh, Billy Munker, uh, and Nate Riddle have just played fantastic up there and given Bo some time. And unfortunately there, Jonathan Dilberto dropped the ball, and here we go back to X Smith and makes a big catch. And here's hitting Blakely out of the backfield to give us another first down. And a lot of things are looking good for the Pioneers right now. Pioneers would uh, make it first down and five on an illegal substitution. Give it to Blakely, trying to get to the corner. Blakely would carry it for four yards. And then, so a little, well, actually, I don't know how you look at it. Uh, West Powell nearly had it, but a good, also a good round play defensively by Jamal Roll. Great play by their corner. Well, West has got to hang on to that football. He's made that catch a lot. Um, again, Brian, we had way too many drop passes, and that one's got to be made, especially in the end zone there. Uh, Got to get us points. Third down and a little less than a yard. I'm not too sure of the spot here as well. That's one if Chad just stays outside. We've got him pinned inside. I know he saw a hole and put his foot in the ground, but we'll just be patient and buy some time. And here comes Logan Cornelius, a sophomore kicker, comes in and gives us points. You know, at least uh, at least we've answered with some points there and give us a legitimate opportunity in the first quarter. Pioneers nine plays, 46 yards on that drive. Took two minutes and 20 seconds off the clock. And those first quarter highlights were about as quick as the entire first quarter was played. At the end of one quarter, it's 7-3, to three, Catawba. We're back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show after this, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College Athletics. 
If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not when we step up on the field. That's not a small town, but we still do it very big. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours. We grind hard for the rings with the diamonds on it. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. We head to the second quarter. The Tusculum Pioneers trailing 7-3. to Catawba on the drive for the first drive of the second. Again, our second quarter highlights brought to you by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. 7-3 to after the first, Brian. We got a ball game. I told them we were going to play for four quarters. We always do when we play at Catawba. And there's Darius Ben sticking his nose in there from the safety position, making a play. And... You know, guys up front flying around. Damian Herring had a really good football game at nose guard for us and was our defensive player of the week. He's been very consistent in there and uh, held his own all night. And they're, they're throwing the football and converting. We just got to get him on the ground. Again, this is a good running attack for Katab. It's what they always like to do. They try to establish that and then throw just enough. Xavier Bond is somebody who had only carried the ball about 12 times. Um, not necessarily a humongous game, but as far as his carries are concerned, were. Third down end to yard, B.J. Sherrill getting just enough. A redshirt freshman quarterback from right there in Salisbury. Go to the stack, and Bobby Morrison, who had a great day rushing the football, could not hold on to it right here. Great effort by us running them down there. I'm not sure it is. Caused the fumble. It might have been Josh Davis or Luke Harris. And then I thought Jelly was going to get it. Then I thought somebody else was going to get it. And then uh, Catron Beckton ends up coming out of there. And great job by our defensive football team. You know, we may be bending a little bit, but not breaking there when in the red zone. We practice that a lot. We bow our backs and come out of there with a big turnover. Morrison's fumble was forced by Luke Harris and recovered by Catron Jelly Becton. So you start deep in your own territory. Here's sophomore B.J. Spradlin. Great job by B.J. getting us out of the hole. Good job by Bo there finding him and sticking it on his chest. And here we hit Wes outside and we're falling forward, making it close there on big nine yard gain on first down. That's exactly how we need to do it. Go back to him and get two or three here for the first. West Powell with another couple of catches, another career game in receptions for the contest with 10 of them in the game. Pioneers going deep and Xavier uh, Xavion Smith becoming a defender. Third yeah. down and 13. Got to come up with it there. Unfortunately, didn't uh, do our job. And here's Andy Rossetti just uh, busting it. Once again, Andy's our special teams player of the week. Does a great job. We got to get that guy on the ground. That's great hustle there by Byron Butler. A sophomore from down in Louisiana making a big play for us. Rossetti, a 50-yard punt, but the drive, seven plays, 29 yards only for the Pioneers. Catawba would get the ball, and they would uh, open up the passing game again a bit. Their leading receiver is Nate Charest. Charest with a 26-yard reception, and then they pounded a couple of more times to Bobby Morrison trying to get outside. Morrison uh, tripped up by Luke Harris and Dominic James. A great hustle by those two guys, getting over there and getting him on the ground. and Again, we're playing very well defensively. It's getting ready to be third and five here. And uh, our kids are understanding what Coach Izzy and Coach Tobin and Coach Weston are trying to get them coached up. And here we have two missed tackles. Uh, we cannot afford missed tackles. And the uh, little slippery Charest gets the ball in the end zone for Catawba. So the point after good, it's 14 to three, nine plays, 74 yards. Pioneers would take over here on this final drive of the uh, second quarter. Cordell would find Marshall here for 14 yards and back that up. Uh, under some pressure, then again, Bo would just take off and gain six yards on his own as well. Glad to see Bo run the football here and move the chains a little bit for us, trying to do the little things we need him to do. And you know, Bo played pretty good. Uh, had a few errant throws, but other than otherwise, he, you know, he's, he's doing what we need him to do. Not forcing it. Uh, statistically speaking, if you'd have told me what we were going to end up from an offensive standpoint, I thought we'd have scored a whole lot more points than we did. We're just uh, our timing is still an issue right now. It has been for four weeks, and we just got to keep working to iron it out. Big play here for Xavion Smith. Seems to make at least one of these plays per game. Great catch by Xavion. Great catch. Uh, Bo gave him a chance, and Xavion went up and rebounded at the highest point. Things we talk about all the time. Just proud of Xavion there, a junior from over in South Carolina, making that big play. Five catches, 65 yards just in the first half alone for Xavion Smith. We'll see him come up here in just a moment. But the play that seems to just um, the microcosm of the day right there for Powell. Yeah, he's got to catch that football. If he catches it, we're going to get at least a first down, maybe more. And unfortunately, we don't catch it. And they, and they do a good job. we got to do a little bit better job blocking out on the perimeter there once we get Brian the ball in his hands. And 
we're just competing and fighting and you know it's one of those questionable calls there he might have got held uh, just a call we're not getting often out of the backfield but uh, move the change just to get any points right there before the half that was a fourth down attempt for the pioneers again they you hear they are moving the chains and first downs with eight in the first half um, there weren't the three and outs in the first half but it was a very swift first half to say the least but the pioneers still trail at halftime which has been the case much of this season pioneers trail 14 to 3 to Gatava. we'll take a look at your second half highlights after this presented by gateway ford lincoln mazda Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank. Your locally owned community bank. A strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Troy Slavin is going to go deep. He's looking for Zambion Smith. Caught it at the 29, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Zambion Smith. Tusculum Pioneers trail 14 to 3 as we head to the third quarter. Our third quarter highlights brought to you by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Unfortunately here, Brian, it's uh, the way the night went. We get the football opening drive. We're driving down the field, having some success. Uh, thought we had a great throw here and it went right through our hands. And we've got to make that catch in that situation here. We end up letting Andy Rossetti punt it from the 40 yard line and told him we need to get a plan, need to have a good idea. And, Ira Macon, redshirt freshman from down the lower state of South Carolina, does an unbelievable job pinning that football inside the five, actually down inside the one. Great execution by our punt team. All right, so the Pioneers again down 14 to three, and Aiken out of Hanahan would make that stop in there. Chance Story then would uh, back this play up, the very first play for Kitaba, and pin them deep. The defense did their job, kept them inside the five with the help of a couple of uh, penalties, and then Brian Marshall does his job on the punt return end. Great job by Brian. I think that was our making again, making a big block. We got guys folding back in there, trying to play smart, make sure we don't do anything silly. And Brian puts his foot in the ground and gets us inside the red zone again, or at least close to it there. And uh, you think we got good things happening, feel like we do, and uh, end up not having very good results. Marshall would take the ball to the 13 yard line where the Pioneers would take over on first down and 10. Bo Cordell would come out. Um, and again, smart. Instead of trying to force something, just would take off, take what the defense gives him, gives him four yards to the eight. Thought we had a chance right there, and here we just got to do a better job blocking on the perimeter. We got two receivers out there that don't do their job and puts us in third down, and you know, Bo's trying to find something, and he makes this throw most of the time. Unfortunately, it got, a little, got away from him a little bit and ended up throwing it out of the back of the end zone, and we've got to make this kick. It's just like an extra point. And, uh, you know, Logan's got to do a better job. It was a good snap by Schuyler. It was a good hold by Talent. We just missed the kick. Pioneers would, uh, the field goal attempt would go awry, but the Pioneers would get a three and out defensively, and then Justin Houston, this uh, young man has a little waggle in his game, and he would, he would nearly get the first down, find Powell for the first down. Those Pioneers start this drive from their own 20. Great job there. Justin Houston's going to be a name we talk a whole lot about. Uh, freshman from Cleveland, Tennessee area, Bradley Central High. And, here we hit West and makes a good catch and gets us 12 or 15, converts first down. Again, we're making some good things happen. Here's Justin Houston again, catching the ball on the perimeter and getting nine, uh, you know, or just giving us, we've got some life. And I think that's BJ or uh, I think it is BJ Spradlin getting us the first down from the backfield. Good things are happening. We just, uh, we got to convert. Bo Cordell across to Xavion Smith. Again, that's on third down. Pioneers converting there to make it first down and 10. 
Um, again, a lot of good things happening for the Pioneers. The drives, uh, eliminating three and outs. L.J. McCray, who was All-American return guy two years ago in this contest, where he set a conference record, a school record for return yards uh, with a big hit on Houston. Just a little off for Bo, and then a good defensive play, and all of a sudden you're you're facing fourth down again, Coach. Yeah, we just got to make the, we made the right decision here, I think, to go for it. And uh, we're a little bit far away for a field goal try in that ball game, and. Uh, we've got to uh, we got to convert. We got to do a little bit better job than we did, obviously. 13 plays, 52 yards, just under three minutes off the clock. However, and at the end of the third, the Pioneers still find themselves by a, down by a score of 14 to three. Very interesting fourth quarter. We'll have that when we continue after this. The Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve, so while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. Consumer Credit Union. Loans? We can do that. Three locations in Greenville and Mossheim. At Consumer Credit Union, everybody can join. Visit online at ConsumerCreditUnion.com. So Cornelius will attempt a 41-yard effort. The kick is away, end over end toward the upright, and he splits them. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. As before we get into this fourth quarter, the Tusculum Pioneers Trail, 14-3. to Hour and 47-minute rain delay, something like that. But... It almost came out of nowhere. It was one of those situations that I thought Jelly Becton was walking off the field because he was pointing to something because he was actually just switching sides. And I even said, well, what's Becton doing? And then I saw the lightning. I thought maybe he was running for cover. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Well, we had something similar to this at Western Carolina in 2010, if you remember, but uh, it rained really hard that night. Uh, but here it was very odd. It, the weather was wonderful. It was a beautiful night. Thought we saw lightning, didn't pay much attention, and all of a sudden we saw lightning, and they put us inside, and players were asking why we're in here, and all of a sudden we heard why we were in there. It was a major lightning strike, and it was just in the area, and I didn't think it was an hour and 47 minutes long, but obviously it was, and we got back on the field. And thought, Brian, it would give us an opportunity to, to go in, coach up a little bit, and maybe get a jump start because we weren't playing very good. Uh, I really thought it would give us a turn for the best, and unfortunately, we continue to have some of the same problems. Well, it took a couple of snaps to start the fourth quarter, so it's third down and long. Catawba does not convert. The Pioneers get the football, and you think, all right, we're going to take over, but Bo Cordell would have one of the mistakes to start the fourth quarter. We'll take a look at your fourth quarter highlights after the hour and 40-some minute delay from Salisbury. Your fourth quarter brought to you by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Yeah, it was third and 22, and I knew we were getting ready to get the ball back, uh, so we do, and, you know, I feel like good things are happening, and Bo just happens to force one here, and, you know, he, he's trying to make a play. I know he is. I know the situation we're in. We're all pressing a little bit, and they're in good coverage and make a big interception for him. Catawba would get the football after getting the stop, and they're working on the clock, basically, um, and uh, that's what they're doing. But this defense for the Pioneers, again, in this second half, trying to pitch this shutout. Guys up front, such as Damian Herring, uh, making some big plays. Adam Wimbush, we didn't talk enough about what he had done, or Wimberly. Um, uh, these guys up on the front here in this fourth quarter alone did a very good job, but Bobby Morrison still picking up big yards. This third down, Chad Story making sure receiver Harrison can't go any further. So the Pioneers will get the ball. They'll start from their own nine-yard line, deep in their own territory, with Brian Marshall with the, the fair catch, and Brian Marshall goes to work. Big first down there, get us out of the, uh, out of backed up. Brian just keeps breaking tackles. And our defense football team did an unbelievable job uh, stopping them. And it's fourth and short there and uh, sort of rolled the dice with not getting many points. Decided to go for it. We ended up getting the first down and, you know, we, uh, we're moving. Things are good. Things are looking positive. We hit the running back out of the backfield again and I feel like uh, some good fates coming our way and we just got to keep making plays and 
That's a big play by Bo. Great play. Instead of losing yards, hits Blakely and gets us five or six. Blakely, who took the wrath from L.J. McCray. Three catches for 27 yards. Pass across the middle. Justin Houston, who career best four catches in 27 yards on this day. One of the very rare crossing patterns you'll see here in this second half. Kyle Dickey makes his first catch after a couple of games, who will come up with the first down. Things looking very positive, Coach. You're getting it near the 10-yard line. and. Uh, game awareness. I think you drop that or try to throw it at the feet, but lose a couple of yards here and then Bo trying to make something happen with his feet, just unable to do it. Yeah, just moving the chains enough to get us in great field goal range and you know we're down two scores at this time, so we went ahead and tried to take what we would say, take the points and good job our holder, snapper, kicker. Logan puts it through there to make it a one score ball game with a lot of time left. Cornelius was good, 13 plays, 81 yards. Again, a final of uh, make, to make this score 14 to 6. This the microcosm of the day, the basic final drive where we just couldn't hang on to the football. Yeah, drop the football there. Uh, unfortunately, X has got to make that catch, and you know, we went back over there and we drop another one. And you know, you can't drop the football, especially when you're trying to put together a game-winning drive and make some good things happen. And here, I thought he was going to make the catch. Good play by their guy. We we got to hang on to the football. You know, that's a drop. That's what that is. And, uh, Dropped three big balls there on that side of the field in, the, in that last drive and walk away with six points as an offense is very disheartening. I know we're better than that. That was the uh, final play, final drive for the Pioneers. And again, the fourth down, the uh, big hit uh, made by Chad Endres, the safety for Catawba. Look at some of the numbers for Tusculum Cordell, 33 of 58, 254. You know, he usually throws it 58 times. and. He usually completes 60% of those passes. Not bad. West Powell, a big day, 10 catches, 63 yards. Smith, seven catches, his first game this year where he has been held under 100 yards in receiving, which is 82 yards. Never were, did ever seem to get on top of their defense and on top of their secondary. Couldn't get behind them. Uh, we went in thinking that their pass defense statistically wasn't as good. They were great rushing the quarterback. I think your offensive line did the better job than their defensive backs did a better job than what we thought. Yeah, we just, if we catch the football, then we've moved, we're moving the chains a whole lot more. I think uh, we were double di digits on drop balls, and uh, they were athletic in the secondary. They got a good defense. I said they were the best defense we'd face all year. Uh, I thought our offensive line protected the quarterback well. I thought we ran the football when we needed to. We uh, ultimately, it boils down to just mistakes uh, on the perimeter. Our receivers got to block better, and our receivers got to catch the football better. For Kitaba, Bobby Morrison had a huge first half, just his numbers, 24 carries, 158 yards. Uh, did have a touchdown in the contest as well. B.J. Sherrill just 8 of 10 passing for 82 yards and a new career best, Darius Ben defensively. Again, he's playing for Laurente Archie, who was injured for this football contest. Comes up with 10 catches. A lot of youth out there on the defense, but I really see them. Those baby steps that Mike Iese had talked about. we got to get alignment assignment. we got to get that figured out. I don't know if they're figuring it out, but definitely when you throw a shutout in the second half, you've got to feel pretty happy about your defense. Well, we've gotten better every week. We've played four games, and uh, defensively, we've gotten, literally, we've gotten better every quarter, every half, every game. And uh, now we, we have two quarters of uh, shutting out Catawba at Catawba. So I think we've made great strides there. Uh, we're still not perfect by no means. And got a huge challenge against Brevard, who's going to run the option at us this week. And, Hopefully we'll be prepared. I know we'll be prepared. We just got to go make plays. We'll talk about that and wrap up Kitaba when we come back after this. Unfortunately, in the 17th game between the two, it's the 12th win for the Kitaba Indians. Kitaba wins it a final of 14 to six. Kitaba two and two on the year and go one and one in the league. And the Tusculum Pioneers fall to one and three and now 0 and one in the league. We'll talk about our players of the week when we return right after this. The Frankie DeBus Show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. 
Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. It was the 17th series, but 17th game in the series between Tuscaloosa Man, Catawba, and the Pioneers fall by a final of 14 to 6. And just another thing, since Coach isn't here right now, it was the first touchdown that the Pioneers did not score since the 2006 season in a game that came at the end of the year when the Pioneers fell to Carson Newman, scored only a field goal in that contest again back in 2006. Please don't tell Mark Kolb or Coach DeBush that I even brought it up. It's time now, though, to meet our Players of the Week. We'll start on offense, our Sodexo Offensive Players of the Week. Offensive lineman Israel Pickens, the senior out of Piedmont, South Carolina, from Woodmont High School, preseason South Atlantic Conference selection, one of our Offensive Players of the Week. Another Offensive Player of the Week, another offensive lineman, sophomore out of Duncan, South Carolina. It's Jake Bridwell, the product from Burns High School. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Player of the Week, Damian Herring, the junior out of Stockbridge, Georgia from Martin Luther High School. Big game in the trenches on the defensive line for him. From the defensive line perspective, three tackles and on the season now with 13 tackles all told. Our Green Coach Tour Special Team Players of the Week, Andy Rossetti, the junior out of Kenneth City, Florida from St. Petersburg High School. At three punts, averaged 43.7 yards a kick, along a 50, and pinned the opposition twice inside the 20. Brian Marshall, the senior out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, Udawa High School, four punt returns, 65 yards, with a long of 32, and two kickoff returns for 44 yards. Came in as the conference leader and seventh in the nation in kickoff return average. And Iram Aiken II, the redshirt freshman out of Hanahan, South Carolina, Hanahan High School in the Charleston area. He was great on punt coverage, downing a punt inside the one. Time for our Andrew Johnson Bank call of the game. And again, it came on special teams, which has been a bright spot for the Pioneers this year. And it's Brian Marshall. A little bit of a low snap and a little bit of a line drive punt. Marshall will let it take a hop. He'll field it and get a block. He has the 20, gets another block, has the 25, gets another block at the 30. To the 40, runs into that blocker at about the 44-yard line. It's time for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. In the contest, Pioneers did come up with 58 yards rushing, Catawba 230, and much of that in the first half. Pioneers threw for 254, Catawba just 96 yards. Total offense, Tusculum 75 plays, 312 yards, 66 plays, 326 yards for Catawba. Elsewhere in the contest, 23-19 time of possession for Tusculum. Catawba 36-41. Tusculum 6 of 16 in third downs. Catawba at one time had been 5 of 6, I should say, 5 of 6 in the first half. They finished just 6 of 13 for the game in third downs. Pioneers were 1 for 4 on fourth down. Catawba 1 for 1. Tusculum 2 for 3 in the red zone. And Catawba finishing 2 for 2. When we come back, a final word with Pioneer coach Frankie DeBuck as we look ahead to the Tusculum and Brevard game, which is this coming Saturday. That's when the Frankie DeBunch Show continues, presented by Gateway Forward, Lincoln Mosset. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now, buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go. Yeah, I need to work. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! The best deal in the neighborhood just got better with more to love on the two for 20 meal only at Applebee's. Applebee's is a proud sponsor of the Frankie DeBus TV show and side of the Frankie DeBus radio show. Applebee's on the bypass in Greenville. There's no place like the neighborhood. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Anything you'll ever need to rent or buy is at Grand Rental Station. Business, commercial, or residential, from forklifts to backhoes to tents, party goods, wedding supplies, and much more. On the Andrew Johnson Highway in Greenville, Grand Rental Station, 639 
6160. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBun Show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. The Pioneers fall to Catawba this past Saturday. Time to turn the page, start a new chapter, and it's the second chapter of the South Atlanta Conference. The Brevard Tornado come into Pioneer Field as we celebrate homecoming 2012 this coming Saturday. Outside of that, Coach, also another special event going on for the Pioneer football program and for the coaches this coming Saturday on, on the sidelines. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Coach for the Cure, uh, multiple uh, dystrophy, I guess is mm -hmm. the right word. Uh, we have a young man on our team, uh, Curtis Moneyhun. It's uh, unfortunately affected by that disease, and he's a big part of our program. You might have seen him on the sideline in a wheelchair, and uh, he, he's affected by MD, and he, he'll be there to to represent today like he always, or Saturday like he always is, and get an opportunity to go out there for the coin toss. We also have another young man coming from locally from here in Greenville and Greene County area that, that uh, unfortunately is affected. So it's a special day, and the least we can do is try to help those that are not as privileged as, as some of the others, and it'll be a big day for those guys. Usually like to wrap up the previous game and before we preview the next one, but I'm, I'm not even going to do that. Brevard will come in, and it's a change in the South Atlanta Conference before you only saw Carson Newman run this particular style of option, but Brevard and LR have done it the last couple of years, which is good. You prepare for it, but are they running it? Are they running it effectively? They are running it. Uh, they haven't had as much success as the previous years, uh, but I do know every game they line up in it and they uh, they see if you're prepared to stop it. So that's exactly what they'll do to us. They'll they'll challenge us with the the midline and the triple and a lot of different variations. Uh, Coach Paul Hamilton's a wonderful person, and uh, he'll have his bunch ready to play. Uh, they're, they're, they haven't had the luck of a victory yet, but I guarantee they're talking about coming to Tuscum and getting one. And you know, we, we're, we're sitting here at one and three, and feel like we're better than that. But until we prove it between the white lines for four quarters, it is what it is. And we've got to play better, and we got alignment, assignment, football defensively, and we got to catch the football offensively, and we got to score points. Have one of the most imposing punters who's also a wide receiver, uh, one of the, the great dual threats, I think, in the South Atlantic Conference. And it's Eric Watt, and I, I don't see why they don't use him more. Are you in fear that they may try to break out the Eric Watt game this Saturday? Well, they put him in different places. You know, he used to play tight end, now he plays receiver. At least they're putting him where they can get him the football some. And uh, he, He's a good player on offense, but he's an unbelievable punter, and he has no style about him. He has, it's just to catch it and kick it, and it's, uh, it's an interesting football in the air. And, He's, uh, he's definitely one of the, the strongest leg kids in our league. I know you can't predict the future, but if you can put four quarters together offensively, are you in cruise control Saturday? You know what? If we would just play four quarters of football, I would like to make that evaluation after it's over. We have yet to put four quarters of football together in, in any phase. It, it, all the way back to uh, when we started fall camp, you know, felt like we were practicing about 50, 60 percent of the time, and now we're playing that same way. And, we changed it a couple weeks ago. I thought we were, we were we're coming out of it, playing better, and defensively we are. Defensively, we're starting to play for four quarters, uh, but offensively, we we still have got to find a way to do it. And you know, we're just so close to being special on offense, but right now we're stumping our toe. Uh, give me that question after we actually do play for four quarters, and we'll see how we perform. Well, the Pioneers and the Brevard Tornadoes. We'll kick it off this coming Saturday from Pioneer Field. Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck this week. Thank you. The Tusculum Pioneers fall to Catawba this past Saturday. We hope that you'll join us this Saturday as Tusculum takes on Paul Hamilton's Brevard Tornado. They've got an exciting offense, and they always have one excitable player defensively that seems to make a bunch of plays. Should be an exciting game from Pioneer Field. It's homecoming 2012. We welcome back the alumni to Tusculum College and the campus, the parade, and all the festivities that surround homecoming 2012. The campus should be buzzing with events such as volleyball on campus along with men's soccer following the Tusculum College football contest at Pioneer Field. Well, for all of us behind the scenes here at the Frankie DeBus Show, Quentin Talley and Nathan Humbert, I'm Brian Staten for Coach Frankie DeBus. We hope you'll join us again next Saturday. But don't forget, catch the game on the Pioneer Sports Network. Our coverage beginning at 1 o'clock, kickoff at 2 o'clock, AM 1450 WSMG and worldwide through TusculumPioneers.com. And you can catch a web stream of the contest as well through TusculumPioneers.com. Just, just click the football schedule for the link. Again, until next Saturday, Brian Staten, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns.
presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal. Located on the 11E Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. There's no place like the neighborhood. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Greenville, Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, and Cleveland. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. By Green Coach Tour, celebrating their 66th anniversary. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.